Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. In today's video, I'm doing some French Country Thrift Clips using the new Spring IOD release. For my first project, I'm going to be working on this metal tray that I thrifted. To prime the surface, I'm going to use Paint Couture's 2-in-1 Primer. I'm going to be doing two coats on this piece. Now, some of you may not like that I'm painting this tray, but I'm not sure if you guys noticed, but it had a lot of cup marks on the center part. And honestly, this is just going to give it a lovely refresh and it will work so much better in my home. When my two coats of primer were dry, I took Paint Couture's Buttercream Chalk Paint and I'm going to be applying two and a half even coats. I'm using my size 12 Eco Brush to apply the paint. It has a tapered end so I'm able to get into all of the details that are around the outside. I often have people ask me if I paint the back of the trays. Sometimes I do if they are very damaged. Otherwise, I clean up the back because I like to have that pop of the original silver metal showing underneath. When my paint was dry, I took out IOD's new Joie de Roses transfer. I've already used two and a bit sheets on a previous project, and today we're going to be using two more sheets. I love that little section with the bird on it, so we're going to do that one and the piece that matches to it and sort of finishes off that scene. So I'm just laying the transfer sheets down on top of the tray, working out how much I'm going to be able to fit there, creasing it, and also then trimming it out. The grid lines are definitely a big help here. Once I'm happy with how that's looking, I peel off the backing sheet and I'm just going to position my transfer design where I want it to go and then press down. Now this has a curved outer surface, so I did have to improvise a little bit when it came to getting that transfer to work in the corners. I sort of had to actually cut the corners a little bit. I made little cuts here and there to help the transfer go down a little bit easier. And ultimately I do end up getting a few cracks but because this particular transfer has an aged cracked finish anyway it kind of worked out it anyway so I wasn't too worried about that so here you can see I've just made a little cut there in the transfer sheet I'm really working that transfer design into that curved corner there and again just working in sections definitely helps once I have the top right hand corner transfer organized, I'm going to focus on the bottom right hand corner. I'm just going to make a little cut so that it's a bit easier to get that design in that corner. And you can see I've just held up one part of the transfer while I rub and burnish part of that design in the corner. Then I've laid down the other one and that just really helped me get the entire design in the corner. I repeated that process in the other corners of the tray as well. Once I have those sections organized, I picked up a corner of the plastic and you can see I'm lifting it as I am rubbing that transfer down and that definitely helps it to release. When it came to the edges of the transfer, I didn't mind if I had some overlap happening because I was able to either pull it off or I just painted over the top of it. Once I removed that excess from the top there, I burnished the transfer with part of the carrier sheet. Now I'm working out the other section. I've trimmed it to size and then I'm going to line it up so that the two designs join up. On this particular transfer, the different sections join up along a wavy line, which I feel really complements the vintage and worn nature of this transfer design. It's definitely a new favorite for me. Once I have the entire transfer down, I'm using the carrier sheet to burnish it a bit further and then I'm going to seal the entire transfer with Paint Couture's Extreme Guard in satin. I'm going to do two coats. At this point, I had a look at the left hand side and the right hand side and thought that I actually liked when the design went all the way up to the edge of the tray. So I'm actually going to cut out another part of the transfer so that the design goes all the way up if that makes sense. 
sense. On the left-hand side, you can see that it's a solid line along the edge. On the right-hand side, it's that wavy transition line. So this is going to fix that up and help the two sides look a bit more cohesive. So I've trimmed out what I need and now I'm just going to rub that design down and it will look like it's never been apart. Once I finished applying the transfer and removing the excess, I did seal over the top of it. And then I came in with a little bit more of that buttercream chalk paint. And I'm actually just going to paint over the top of any of the areas where we had some overlap of the transfer that I wasn't able to remove. Doing this is just going to tidy up that edge. When my paint was dry, I then took Paint Couture's Van Dyke Brown Glaze and I'm going to go over the top of the entire tray. I'm starting off on the outside frame section there of the tray and I just love how this glaze catches all of the ornate details. It just really highlights all of those beautiful curves. So I'm going to continue adding that glaze and then I will be using a wet wipe to pull back some of the excess. Now I do love a vintage antiqued look, so this is definitely the look that I'm going for. However, if this is too grungy for you, obviously you could leave this particular step out. Now you can see that I am wiping back the excess and again, those curves have really been highlighted beautifully. When I get to the center of the tray, however, you can see I'm wiping, but I also then alternate from wiping to dabbing off that particular glaze. And I really love this technique because when you're using a wet wipe, it also distributes little water droplets that are colored that make it look like age spots. So it's definitely a very fun technique. So I'm just going to continue doing this, working my way around the tray until each section of the tray has that glaze and then has some of that excess wiped back. Once my glaze was completely dry, I then took Paint Couture's Bronze Luxe Metallic and I'm going to be adding it around the outside of the tray. I began by adding it in a dabbing and sort of stippling motion. I don't want full coverage here. I want this to look like faded gilding that has worn away over time with use. So definitely not going for full coverage here. Once I finished adding that bronze to the outside sections of the tray, I took a wet wipe, the same one that I was using with the glaze, and now I am dabbing at that bronze metallic and pulling back some of that. I'm also adding a little bit of the glaze, so it's giving it a bit more of an antiqued look. And at this point, I did also decide to come in with a cleaner wipe and to pull back just a little bit more of that bronze to make it look a bit more weathered and worn. At this point, I decided to come in with a bit more of that Van Dyke brown glaze and I'm going to work it into the corners where the transfer had some little cracks. I felt like adding this glaze would help tie in the cracks that had formed as I worked it into the corners. I felt like that would tie it in a bit more with the cracks that are already present on this particular transfer design. And as you can see, I'm then wiping back some of the excess with a wet wipe. And here's our finished French country tray. I love how this turned out. I feel like that transfer works so perfectly with this tray and I really feel like it looks very elegant. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. For my next project, I'm going to be working on this pink vase that I had in my stash. I am first of all going to prep the surface with Paint Couture's 2-in-1 primer. Now, obviously this comes in a white as well, but I already have my gray out, so we're just going to be applying that over the pink. It will also help hide that pink color. 
when my two coats of primer were dry, I took Paint Couture's Buttercream Chalk Paint and I'm going to be applying two and a half coats to this lovely vase. Now, I did not go on the entire inside. I just went down partially in that particular vase because I thought if somebody still wants to use it with flowers, I want it to still be able to have water in there for the flowers. And if I add paint, that paint is probably going to be compromised over time. When my paint was dry, I took out IOD's Veranda Stamp. This is one of their new designs. And I'm going to be using some of the larger floral and also IOD's China Blue Ink. I've already added it to one of the IOD stamp pads and I'm going to be using these two larger designs. Now the flowers do face different directions on these stamps, so they will definitely complement each other nicely. I've inked it up with that beautiful china blue ink and now I'm positioning that stamp down in the bottom section of the vase. So I want it to look like the flowers are creeping up from the bottom. And I'm working in sections here because this is a curved surface. I have one hand holding it in place while the other moves around the design and applies pressure in different areas. I then carefully lifted that stamp straight up. I'm then going to be inking up the design that's very similar, but the flowers are facing a different direction. And I'm going to position that next to our stamp design on the left-hand side and just repeating the same process, one hand holding that stamp in place while the other one moves around the design, applying pressure. As you can see, I do not have a thin mount or any kind of plastic backing on the stamp because I need it to be flexible so that it can mold to the surface of my piece. I'm going to make my way around the vase, adding that stamp and alternating between the two different facing designs. I did, however, make sure that I heat set my ink before I turned it over and added the stamp in any other areas because I didn't want there to be any smearing. My inspiration for this piece was vintage transfer wear and I feel like the IOD stamps and the China Blue ink definitely pay homage to that particular look. Once I'd finished stamping around the different sides, I got to this section and I just did a partial stamp to fit that design between the two. I then took my ink pad and I'm just pressing it around the rim of the vase and I just love how this looks. It's not a perfect impression, but we're not going for perfect here. We want this to look vintage and crazed. So I'm going to add that around the rim and then I did let my ink dry overnight. This is how our vase is looking the next day. Now you could definitely just leave it here and seal it up and you'd be good to go. However, I want this to have more of a vintage look. So I'm gonna take Paint Couture's Crackle Step 1 and I'm going to apply a generous amount around the entire outside and also on that inside lip there. So I'm going to apply it and I'm also going to be doing a cross hatching motion as well. This will give us a bit more of an erratic cracked look. So ultimately I want this to look like crazing. So that's definitely what I've got in mind when I'm applying the product. Once it was dry, I tested it to make sure that it was sticky to the touch, not wet. And then I came in with Paint Couture's Crackle Step 2 and I'm going to apply it in exactly the same way as I did Step 1. And then I did let this dry for several hours. If you don't have a crackle medium on hand, something else you could do is use IOD's Vintage Textures Stamp and use the crackle design in particular. Next, I'm going to be using Paint Couture's Light Brown Sugar Glaze and I'm going to apply it over the top of the entire outside and that inside lip. And then I will be using a wet wipe to pull back some of that excess. Now this definitely gave it a nice vintage feel but it wasn't quite antiqued enough for me. It was still a little bit more subtle than I was looking for. So after I'd removed as much excess as I wanted, I did allow it to dry. And then I decided to come in with Paint Couture's Van Dyke Brown Glaze, which is quite a bit darker. And I'm going to apply it in exactly the same way I did with the Light Brown Sugar Glaze. But as you can see, it definitely makes those cracks a lot more dramatic. It gives the whole thing a much more aged look. And I definitely like the layering as well of the different brown tones. So I'm going to continue adding that glaze around the entire outside and the inside lip until I'm happy with it. 
If I've inspired you to try any of these paint couture products, I would really appreciate it if you would use my affiliate link. I will put it in the description and on the screen. I just get a little thank you from Paint Couture in return. And here's our finished vase. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I definitely feel like it's reminiscent of vintage transfer wear. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. For my final project, I'm going to be working on this sweet little bird that I thrifted. I believe it's made out of some sort of porous stone. It did not feel smooth at all, so I'm going to skip right ahead to using Paint Couture's Abundance Mineral Paint. I am using my size 10 Eco Brush, and I'm just really working that paint into all of the beautiful details on this bird. As soon as I saw it, I knew it would look great with a fresh paint job and also some of my favorite product a glaze because again that's going to bring out all of those details so I'm going to continue to work around the bird here adding that beautiful paint and it really only took one and a bit coats to get the coverage I wanted now this mineral paint has a built-in sealer so I'm not going to have to come in with any sort of top coat once it was dry I took out Van Dyke Brown glaze and as I said I would I'm really working it into the feather details on the bird and then I'm going to be using a wet wipe to pull back some of the excess. If this look was a little bit too grungy for you, a bit too dark, at this point, instead of the antiquing glaze, perhaps you could come in with a white paint wash or a white wax and take it in the opposite direction and really lighten things up. So I'm gonna continue adding that beautiful glaze over the entire bird, pulling back the excess. And this was a really simple project, but I really feel like this was very effective in completely transforming this plain little bird. And here's a look at our finished little bird. I think this turned out really sweet. It's definitely not plain anymore. It is vibrant and beautiful. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. I really hope that you've enjoyed today's video and that it's inspired you to use some of the new IOD transfers or stamps to give your home decor a refresh. Let me know if you had a favorite project from today. If you enjoyed today's video, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that like button, comment and share it out. If you haven't already, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. You can find most of the products used today on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.